Hello there, my fellow damsel rescuers, and welcome to another episode dedicated to the glory hounds known as Imperial Knights. Today's episode is one that I wanted to dedicate solely to one topic. That topic is the ranks and titles of the members from an Imperial Knight house, from the Great Crusade, Horus Heresy, and the more modern period. I am your host, the Grimdark Narrator, and without further ado, let us charge ahead, shall we? Each noble, referred to heraldically as a scion within a knight household, is a warrior with their own chronicle of battle, and the traditions and glories of their forebears to uphold. Each household's bloodline rages from the scion's aspirant, freshly raised up to command their armor in battle and wreathed in dreams of glory, to the scion's marshal, the experienced fighters who make up the household's line of battle, to the upper echelons of the house who hold the traditional ranks of the household's command and who have already written their own legends in battle. In times of open war, when a knight household took to the field en masse, each had their own roles to play, roles founded as much in ancient tradition as in the individual record and reputation of the knight armor and the warrior piloting it. When unleashed, such a tide of iron and fire was a force few powers in the galaxy could withstand. Now, regarding both ancient ranks from the Great Crusade and present-day ranks, so to speak, there are still several categories of these Imperial Knight ranks. All these can include the following. The Headquarters ranks, the Elite ranks, Troop ranks, Fast Attack ranks, and Heavy Support ranks. Now, do remember and don't confuse these ranks with actual classes of Knights. They are quite different things. And we will start with the Ancient Headquarters ranks. The Seneschal The martial traditions and aristocratic rule of a knight household demands a rigid hierarchy in battle, and at the apex of this order is the Seneschal. Commonly, this august title is conferred on either the head of a particular household's mustered forces in the field, or on the master of a particular fortified keep on the night worlds themselves. In both cases, it is heavy not only with symbolic authority, but also might. As to have attained such a rank, a knight must have proved their worth both in personal combat and tactical command, as well as in the more subtle but no less dangerous battlefield of dynastic struggle. The Lord Scion The term Lord Scion is used as a collective term that encompasses the upper echelons of a Questorist Knight Crusade force. Be they, in fact, titled Baron, Margrave, Siridar Count, Thane, or one of a large number of local sub-variations in peerage and rank and ordered below the supreme authority of a seneschal on the battlefield. They are each a war-tempered veteran, whose position has not simply been bought with age and lineage, but with blood and fire upon the battlefield. A Lord Scion's metal and record are known to all under their command, just as it is blazoned by the heraldry that adorns their knight armor, an open challenge to any who would oppose them. The Ranks of the Elites the Preceptor It is unusual, but not unknown, for a scion to display a particular affinity for technology, sometimes even serving time observing and learning from the household's sacristans, although always retaining their distinction and rank. These scions, once they have become veterans of warfare in their own right, also make for the most able instructors of the household's aspirants. They are able not only to impart the lore of arms, but also to teach a deeper understanding of the knight armor, its scope of operations, and the division of machine and man, earning themselves the title of preceptor within the household. The preceptor's lore can be put to use on the battlefield, allowing them to use advanced augury and auspex equipment, which would be beyond those without their learning and serve the role of coordination and communications for their household in battle. The Auk Teller 
The Oakteller is an archaic rank whose traditions flourished in ancient days when night houses battled bloodily for supremacy with one another. Though on many night worlds, feuds and affairs of honor were settled through highly ritualized and formalized duel, when the matter was pressed, either with bitter wrath or pure desperation of survival, mass battle was inevitable. In such warfare, the Auchteller served not as a champion, but as a forlorn hope, oath sworn to strike down the foe's greatest warriors at the cost of their own lives if necessary. In the age of the Great Crusade, such desperate tactics were suppressed, but there were still houses that bore this bitter tradition well. And as the desperate wars of the Horus Heresy unfolded, the need for such sacrifices was born again. The Troop Ranks The Scion Marshal The Scions of the Knights Marshal, also known in common parlance as the Household's Banners, form the main strength of the Knight's battle line. Experienced in warfare and expert in the use of the powerful war machines they command. The Scion Aspirant The Knight Households are not simply a military force, but a hereditary bloodline of war. A bloodline whose sons and daughters must be tempered in the fires of battle from a very young age. Such an apprenticeship is a dangerous one, but vital to the sustenance of a household's strength across generations. Only the most desperate of battles would force a household to endanger all the aspirants at once, however, and so competition between these younglings is very fierce. Fast Attack Ranks the Scion Dolorous. A title bestowed upon the most famed beast killers and slayers among the knights of the household, the epithet Dolorous means grievous or mournful. But within the society of the knights, it has since grown to have a double-edged meaning, of scions who have proved themselves time and again against the mega-predators which populate many of the knight worlds gaining for themselves a tally of trophies and kills worth the envy of their peers. It also implies, one perhaps to whom battle and slaughter have become an addiction to the exclusion of everything else, and for whom life beyond the confines of their knight armor is a pale and hollow thing, and mortal danger their only bread and butter. Such knights often seek to be deployed in the forefront of battle, and will often charge ahead irrespective of any orders to the contrary. While their actions in combat by some are judged to be little more than the madness of a death wish, the power of their bloodlust is a devastating force in combat. Those who survive long enough learn to temper their fury, but not the restless desire for continuous battle, and many will become free blades should they not fall in battle first. The Scion Ulan The Ulan tradition is one followed by the most hot-blooded and impetuous knights, both off and on the battlefield. In war, they seek above all the glory of rapid victory and delight in high-speed maneuver, destroying their foes in a fury of close-range fire and swift assault. Caution is to them an anathema, and valor lies only in the close press of battle. Within the Questoris Crusade forces, the Scions Ulan were used by the wiser household commanders as advanced scouts, raiders and reavers, either to form the front skirmish line of the household in the open field, or as flanking forces, to encircle a foe and run them down once they break. As a result of their preferred tactics, many Scions Ulan covered the use of the less common Serastus pattern knights, owing to their superior battle speed. The Heavy Support Ranks The Scion Arbaluster An Arbaluster excels at dealing death and destruction at a distance, utilizing their knight's firepower to its fullest and most devastating effect. They are skilled gunners, and they undertake a vital role in the household's battle line, identifying and destroying enemy heavy weapon emplacements to screen their comrades' advance and help shield their fellows from aerial attack. The Scion Implacable An epithet applied to a household knight who has shown a particular aptitude for siege warfare 
An implacable is an invaluable warrior. In such situations as heavy assault against fortified positions, and also in the desperate maelstrom of cityscape warfare. In situations such as these, a knight, despite its power, can become undone if unexpectedly surrounded and swarmed by the enemy, but not so the implacable, who though may be marked as far more cautious than their brothers in battle, is adept at crushing infantry like vermin. And now for the more simplified ranks of the modern day. The High King This guy is the head of an imperial-aligned knightly household. The Preceptor This guy is the head of a Mechanicus-aligned knightly household. The Baron A lord in their own right, all barons do owe allegiance to their High King or Preceptor. But not all of them are equal as positions within this rank are still hierarchical, based on the individual baron's influence and battle experience. The most experienced barons in a knightly household make up a high king's exalted court. The barons of Mechanicus-aligned knightly houses are known as Barons Prime, second only in power to the preceptor himself. The Seneschal, not to be confused with the Great Crusade rank of Seneschal. Some veteran knights who prove themselves worthy in the fires of battle, either through countless martial triumphs or by one truly heroic act, are awarded the rank of Seneschal, and are paragons of their house. The Knight Warlord When fielding an army where the primary detachment is made up of Imperial Knights, one knight is dominated as the Knight Warlord. This is more of a ceremonial title and is equal in rank to the Seneschal. The Knight These are the warriors who have proven themselves in battle and form the bulk of each knightly house's household detachments. The ranks of the Knights include many types of warriors, from the freshly blooded hothead younglings to the solid veterans experienced with dozens of engagements but all will proudly and steadfastly represent their house at war. The Knight Apparent After undergoing the ritual of becoming, in itself a praiseworthy feat, a knight begins his career as a knight apparent. He will retain this title until he has been blooded in his very first full-scale battle, after which the supplemental title of Apparent is dropped and he is accepted by his peers as a fully-fledged knight. And this, my friends, has been what I wanted to tell you about the various ranks and titles from within a knightly household. What would you choose to be if you were a member of such a household, assuming you didn't want to be the boss? Let me know in the comments below. Was this video informative or entertaining? In that case, please consider clicking the like button and subscribing for more content. And if you'd like to help keep the lore videos coming, please go check my Patreon page, the link for which is in the video description. Thank you very much for watching, and I wish you all a great day. The Emperor Protects.